What's up friends? It's been a little bit since I gave you an update, so I figured I'd go around the trailer and show you what I've done. Um, I've got the shower pretty much done. I did corrugated roofing for the walls, so I might see my pictures. I thought that looked kind of cool. You can see the walls in the trailer aren't completely straight. See how there's like no gap right down there. When you come up here, you've got this huge gap. So this flashing is going to work for two reasons. It'll seal it up, plus then I can get this straight. Basically, I built little angled shims in here, and then that'll give me a nice solid place to mount the flashing. And then that tin will just basically taper out from that corner over to here. I've got the flashing up in both corners, put that plastic up for a vapor barrier. So I was able to get the uh, tin up. Um, it's actually just corrugated roofing. So this is a trim. It's gonna go just right around my wall there. And then my door will come up and shut on this. Make a nice solid edge and then I don't have to worry about doing anything to trim this out nice. So I got, I had to bend them in two pieces just because my the bender isn't long enough to do a 75 inch piece. So this is actually kind of an accident. Originally this piece was gonna come all the way out to the edge here, but uh, I mismeasured when I cut that hole right there because I didn't think about it going over the other one. Then I got thinking it might actually not be too bad if I just put a screw in here in case I want to do one of those pull across shower curtains. Or... So I made all these little plates right here, and then I also cut out some uh, just regular anchor points. So I'm going to put these on there to uh, tie down my water tank in the front of the trailer. So I'll just run a couple of screws through there, put those on, run some ratchet straps down. It should work. So let's uh, get these welded up. Okay, I'm gonna go make sure this will fit in the trailer first before I weld that down because the strap needs to come through this way, but ultimately it'd be better, you know, if it was like this. So I'm gonna go test it out and see. All right, so the test fit went well and we can make two more of these work just fine. So let's get them welded up. to run these uh, self tapper screws down through this one because there's the metal brace underneath ends up right where those holes are. So. Alright so this is what I've done here to connect the water tank to the plum the rest of the plumbing. I just did these stainless steel braided lines with these have little quick necks on there under the pump and then I did a loop going into the pump and a loop going into the tank that way you know when this thing's going vibrating and stuff you don't have it vibrating plus it's just a little better way to do it um, just in case you have movement somewhere and I just built this little bracket right here just TIG welded this little uh, braces on there and then screwed that to the floor so this should be insulated from the plumbing is pretty good um, yeah and then right there I've got my all my valves so I can shut the water on and off um, mostly I have the valves and stuff for winterization so because you don't want to fill your water tank full of antifreeze so those valves allow me to bypass the water heater 
And then I've got the hose bib right there. Got the water inlet. The next thing I need to do is get a piece of hose to go from there to this. Now this tank, it only came with one fitting on it. It came with the stock fitting there. So I'm gonna have to drill a hole and I'm probably gonna try to plastic weld fitting on there that'll match that same size. So bring it over there, drop that in. We have a nitrogen plastic welder at work. So that weld actually turned out to be pretty strong. I wasn't sure about it there for a minute, but so that's all hooked in. Got my tank mounted back into place. I ended up getting, uh, you can buy this rubber gasket stuff from like a hardware store. So I've got that to put it behind there so that these don't cut into my tank. But um, now I just gotta figure out all these wires. So this is an action is actually an electric and a gas uh, water heater. So I'm pretty sure that's what we need these go to. And then this is for the, the 12 volt system that I got to wire in. So this is the pan that I made out of aluminum. I just kind of bent a little cross break in there and then painted it up with automotive paint. It's got like a two inch lip all the way around. And then I just dropped that tin down inside of it. And then the pipe then comes out over here and that'll be for, um, that way I can drain my sink, my shower and have my drain with one hole into the tank. All right, friends, that's all I got for you this time. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, like button, comment, DM me if you wanna know how I did something in the video that I didn't quite cover. Maybe I'll make a little uh, short video trying to show that for you. And uh, anyways, catch you guys next time.